Dr. Bergson. All of our patients are followed by various specialists. Uh, they all sign informed consent forms. Uh, conventional therapies are explained to them. And most of the cancer patients that I see are considered end stage. This is a follow-up of one of our patients, Mrs. GB. She's a 74-year-old woman who's from Los Angeles. She had biopsy-proven pancreatic cancer. We first saw her in September 2006. She told me that her religion does not allow standard medical therapy, and several of her friends had died from uh, standard treatment. Our treatment program consisted of low-dose naltrexone, 4.5 milligrams at bedtime. I added alpha-lipoic acid to most of these uh, people's regimen. She comes in about every six months for two weeks and gets uh, lipoic acid twice a day. She has a very healthy lifestyle and she's very adherent to the program. One of the reasons that I added alpha lipoic acid was um, years ago, actually for 23 years, I was the principal investigator for the FDA for alpha lipo intravenous alpha lipoic acid as a prescription drug. But since that time, it's been changed to a nutraceutical. I used it for the reversal of um, serious liver diseases, and I still do, especially hepatitis C, uh, even alcoholic cirrhosis. One of the things that alpha lipoic acid does is it's a modifier of gene expression. So it seems to interfere with the genes, some of the genes that promote the growth of cancer. This is Mrs. GB when we first saw her in September of 2006. And this is a PET CAT scan. As you can see, her liver had many metastases of cancer. And this is, I'm sorry. And this is the pancreas. Uh, with a, if, for the people who are not familiar with PET scans, uh, these folks have injected uh, glucose, a glucose solution, and the glucose is tagged with a radioactive isotope. And it seems that glucose goes immediately to cancer cells because cancer cells, cancer cells uh, really like to eat sugar. That's why we tell our people not to uh, eat, eat, eat many sweets when they're on the program. So here's the pancreas, many tumors, and here are metastases to the liver. September of 06. She was on the program for only a few months. And as you see, no metastases in the liver, and the pancreas appears to be free of cancer. Uh, this is residual glucose in the bladder and in the kidneys and in the heart. In March 2008, she was also free of tumors. From September 2006 to October 2008, we've been following her. Today she feels normal with no symptoms of cancer of the pancreas or metastases to the liver. This is more than 25 months following the diagnosis of metastatic pancreatic cancer. This is uh, one of our cases that we're, um, we're writing up right now for publication. You might remember Mr. J.A., pancreatic cancer with metastases to the liver. We for, first saw him 
in October 2002. And this uh, case was actually published in Integrative Cancer Therapies. Uh, J.A. was uh, 46 years old, presented to the emergency room with vague abdominal pains. A cat, CAT scan was performed, revealed a dense mass in the head of the pancreas and at least three metastases in the liver. A fine needle biopsy of the liver metastases revealed poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma of the pancreas. <coughs> This is the pancreas with a large tumor, October 2002. And these are metastatic lesions to the liver. Following diagnosis from his local oncologist, he was sent to another oncologist for chemotherapy, a 21-day course of uh, the standard treatment. His white cell count dropped, uh, his platelets almost disappeared, and his oncologist offered no hope. Uh, he sought a second opinion from MD Anderson Hospital in Houston. After a complete workup and review of records and biopsies, the patient was told that his condition was hopeless and nothing could be done. In November of 2002, he presented to our office. He told me that he was 46 years old and did not want to die. He had a young son that he wanted to see grow up. <clears throat> Said he had a very healthy lifestyle and he didn't know why he developed this horrible disease. I told him I'd try to develop some type of a program that would make his life a little easier. Low dose naltrexone at bedtime intravenous lipoic acid twice a week and a healthy lifestyle, including, including lots of vegetables, very low, simple carbohydrates. The course of events were uneventful. The patient went back to work full time. All symptoms disappeared. As the patient continued on his treatment, regular CAT scans were ordered. CAT scans of 2003, April and June revealed no, no changes, uh, but the lesions had not grown. <coughs> this is 2006. Still, the uh, gentleman felt well, and the tumor was still there. We didn't do a PET scan, so we don't know if the tumor was active or not. It may have just been dormant. And in 2006, the metastases uh, are still in the liver. His CAT scan almost six years after initial diagnosis, August 2008. Here's the pancreas. And I don't see a tumor there anymore. And here's the liver. There are scarred areas but the metastases don't look the same way. And the gentleman feels normal. JA again, diagnosis of pancreatic cancer, metastases to the liver, 2002. He's alive, working, and feeling normal 72 months following diagnosis. I have friends who are hepatologists, gastroenterologists, and they say, well, MD Anderson was wrong, he never had pancreatic cancer. Even, even after I, I show them the CAT scans, he, he has something else. 